the alarm goes off, please leave the building in an orderly fashion through the nearest fire exit. Please use either fire exit through the main doors of the hall of the fire exit into the storeroom adjacent to the stage. The fire assembly point is in the island at the front of the main entrance to the building. Please do not delay your evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do so by council staff. Please note that the meeting is audio recorded. Please switch off mobiles or turn them to silent. Please note that toilet and hand washing facilities are in the foyer area. Members of the public, while you are of course entitled to film or take photographs during this meeting, can I please emphasise to you that this should be done without disruption to the meeting and can only be done from a designated area in the public seating. Thank you very much for raising your hand uh, clearly in the air um, that you are photographing and filming this evening. I will now ask officers to assist... Sorry, I don't need to say that because you're already sitting. <laughs> Thank you. So, members, please be upstanding to receive the chairman, Reverend Kim Lepley, and the chief executive. So let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we bring before you this evening the agenda for this meeting, that we who have been entrusted with the responsibility to govern and make decisions for those who have elected us, that we would be guided by the best of motives and with the interests of all for the benefit of all. Give clear minds to our councillors and the desire to hear all points of view including those that may be diametrically opposed to our own. For an openness of debate, make us gracious and courteous to friend and opponent alike, with a real sense of working together for this district and the areas that are represented by each of our district councillors. At the same time, we commend for your blessing the work of all the employees of Rochford District Council, who maintain, implement, and make possible the words that are debated, discussed, and formed into policy and decisions. I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer, and if you would like to join in with this prayer, then please feel free to do so. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll now hand over to your chief executive. Evening members, um, tonight I'd like just to hold a minute of silence for, um, for a colleague we lost last week, um, Ian Winslet. Um, some of you have worked with him over a relatively short period of time. Um, unfortunately, lost his fight against pancreatic cancer last week. But on behalf of all members and officers, we'll be nice to hold a minute of silence.
Heavenly Father, we pray for colleagues, friends and family of Ian Winslet. We hold them before you and pray that they would know your peace. Amen. And the final blessing for you all this evening. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this evening and forevermore. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking you for your service, but also wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully it's not too busy for you as you lead up to that time, but I do wish you a wonderful, uh, happy Christmas and New Year. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, and you're welcome to stay, as always. <laughs> yeah. I might be able to tempt you because of a glass of wine and a mince pie. <laughs> I have afterwards. smelled it, but yeah. I have to go, I'm okay. afraid. But thank you yeah. very much indeed. I wish you, you well. Thank, thank you. you. Members, please be seated. Members, when I invite you to speak, please wait until there is a microphone in front of you before speaking, as the microphones are needed for the hair and loop and the audio recording. They are all switched on, ready for you to speak, so you do not need to adjust them. Please make sure... Is the hearing loop on, just to make absolutely certain? Yes? You can't hear the back. They can't hear the back. Okay. Is that better? Can you hear? Okay. This is the important bit. Please make sure the microphone is directly in front of you. Should have done that bit first, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> Members, voting will be done on a show of hands in line with the Constitution, I will ask for a show of hands then for and then against the recommendations and then for abstaining. Given the size of this room and the number of us present, can I please ask that you put your hand up clearly, as I've always said, like when you were at school, high in the air so we can be easily seen by all, and leave it up until I ask you to lower it, or the Vice Chairman asks you to lower it. Members, we'll go straight into agenda item one. Apologies for absence. I have, uh, have here apologies from Councillor uh, Butcher, Myers, Squires, Coleman. Um, Gladson and Foster. Is there any others that have not been listed? No one's. No. Kim? Oh, sorry, Councillor Mill. Councillor Mill. Can't hear you, Councillor Mill. Councillor Mrs. Lumley. June Lumley is not. Okay, Councillor June Lumley. We can make a note of that, please. All right. Agenda item two. Minutes of the meeting held on October the 25th, 2022. Members, are you happy for me to sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of October? Is that agreed by members? Agreed, Chairman. Thank you. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? I remind you, members, if anything should come up during the course of the debate, please make it clear uh, at that point, and we will make a note of. Right, agenda item four, announcement from the chairman, leader, and head of paid service. Members, 
Since our last full council meeting, Christmas is in full swing, and I hope you will join me for a drink afterwards upstairs. November was very busy with visits to many local businesses, and I was pr pri pri privileged to represent Rochford District in Barling, Sutton, Rochford for their remembrance services. In November, I also visit the music block opening at the King Edmund School, which was absolutely amazing to see what they have done. That it was before the disappointing that shortly afterwards we had to temporarily close the school uh, because I think most members are aware of the issues with asbestos. And I'm very impressed that the council, Rochford Council, has stepped in providing space at the freight house in a very short space of time. So my compliments to the staff for doing that. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. I'm not going to sing. I've enjoyed tending the local parish Christmas lights switch-ons which were all wonderfully successful and well attended. The Elves Cabin by Rochford Teenage Market was the first held here in the Mill, Hall, Mill Arts and Events Centre and sponsored by Rochford District Council offering young people a free platform to showcase their talents and they really do have so many talented people. I've attended carol services from around Essex to add to the Christmas feeling and with the snow and I must point out in Barling we didn't get any everybody else got it they missed us to settle in places and I hope we don't get too much more now lastly my civic carol service is taking place this Friday at St Andrew's Church in Rochford that's just by the golf club and I hope to see as many of you there as possible. Thank you. Councillor Wooten, have you any announcements? Yes, please, if I may, Chairman, thank you. With your permission, I would like to make a statement on dampened mould on properties within the Rochford District. Like all of us here tonight, I was shocked and saddened to hear of the tragic death of young Awab Isaac as a result of damp and mould conditions in his home. I welcome the resultant focus on damp and mould issues from the government and social housing regulator that this has prompted. I hope this will result in a positive response from the social housing sector. Our aim in Rochford is for everybody to live healthy, safe and fulfilling lives. This includes access to safe and warm homes. Since the inquest findings into AWAB's death were made public, Rochford Council has acted promptly to ensure that landlords across the district are meeting their legal obligations, taking proactive action to support residents and preventing or eradicating damp and mould wherever possible. The Secretary of State for Leveling Up Housing and Communities wrote to all local authorities on the 19th of November requesting information on private sector damp and mould reports and details of how councils are prioritising actions on damp and mould. The target for an initial response was the 30th of November, with a full response by the 27th of January 2023. I am pleased to say that Rochford was able to supply the response in full by the end of November. The Council's Enforcement Service investigates all complaints of disrepair in the private rented sector, including damp and mould. The Enforcement Service dealt with 19 reported damp and mould cases within the last three years. All cases were resolved through either advice or service of notice on the landlord. The Council has not needed to issue civil penalties or prosecutions against any landlord during that period. Rochford Council does not own any of its social housing. Nationally, all registered providers, housing associations, have been contacted by the regulator of social housing and asked to provide data about damp and mould prevalence within their stock. 
Additionally, the Council has contacted all registered providers operating within the district. They have been asked for information on all damp and mould cases and how these have been dealt with, plus how they will be prioritising damp and mould cases in Rochford Homes. I am pleased to say that we have had a positive response from a number of providers, including Sanctuary Housing, our largest landlord. All have stressed their commitment to improving outcomes for residents, ensuring all, all damp and mould cases are prioritised and monitored at a senior level within their organisations. Finally, I would like to point out the support of council, the Council offers to residents in rented homes. This includes a dedicated page on the Council's website information, resources on how to report or tackle damp, mould and condensation. How to rent videos for new tenants, a ready to rent inspection service for landlords and how to apply for the Council's affordable warmth programme. As a Council, we will continue to investigate and tackle all complaints of damp and mould. We will work with registered provider partners to hold them to account where required, to share data and best practice, making a positive difference to the residents of the Rochford District. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr Stevenson, do you have any announcements you wish to make? Thank you, Chairman. I have no announcements to make this evening. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Members, agenda item five, to note the minutes of the executive and committee meetings held between the period 15th of October to the 30th of November 2022. Are these noted, members? Thank you, Chairman. Kill. Agenda item six, business from last council meeting. Members, does anyone have any questions relating to the business from the council meeting held on the 25th of October? Okay, thank you. Agenda item seven, report on urgent decisions. There are none. Agenda item eight, harmonization of pay, terms and conditions for the one team partnership. And this is in the hands of the Chief Executive, Executive Mr Stevenson. Thank you, Chairman. Members, you have a report in front of you, item eight, um, this report around the harmonisation of pay and terms and conditions for the One Team Partnership. This has been brought about since the agreement on the 25th of January um, 2022, where we agreed to have a strategic partnership with Brentwood. As part of that journey, um, tonight sets out the framework for pay and remuneration for any members of staff that take on a role across the partnership. I'm more than happy to take any questions on, on tonight's on the report tonight. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions? Sorry. Councillor Mrs. Wilson. Hello, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Wilson, can I remind you to stand? Oh, sorry. Apologies, Chairman. Um, yeah, I just had two questions, um, and that's probably because I'm fairly new at this and I might have missed some information from earlier. But um, I've, I've read in the papers that the review will start at the end of 2022, which is great. I just wondered, is there um, an expected to be completed date? Obviously, this might move, but is there, is there an end date in mind? And my second question, Chair, is... Um, who is undertaking this review and um, are members involved in this? Thank you. Mr. Davidson. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Wilson, Mrs. Wilson. Um, with regard to the reviews, there will be a number of reviews throughout the um, partnership and um, sort of due diligence work across different services. The intention is any service with significant change of coming together, these will come in front of members for a number of different forums, in particular as agreed back in January 20, um, 25th, um, to go to overview and scrutiny ahead of going to um, the relevant committee, um, that could either be executive or council, um, so that's the intention. Councillor Mrs Mason. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'd just like to have some reassurance because when we have these situations it creates I'm sure uncertainty for our staff and I notice there's quite a degree of variation between the conditions 
between the two councils. Can I ask if the intention, and I hope it is, is that for existing staff, should the um, outcome on a particular item be less than what their present contract is, that their terms will remain on the most beneficial if they're already in service? In other words, will the staff not lose out through this process? Thank you. Susan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Councillor Mrs Mason. Um, with regard to the report, um, Appendix B, that looks at both the Brentwood terms and conditions and the Rochford terms and conditions, the, the intention is that no one loses out and, and betterment where there is an opportunity around that for, for some areas. So as you can see, there's a number of areas. Um, holiday allowances uh, are different at Brentwood to Rochford, so the intention would, would be to, to get on the higher level of, of holiday allowance for the partnership. So no one will lose out if they're going for a similar role um, across, uh, across the partnerships, so if that was the case. Um, we will still have our own terms, conditions and pay within Rochford and Brentwood, um, and this is the one team framework, so the intention will be to services that come jointly will use the framework, any services that stay within Rochford or Brentwood will, will, will use the current um, pay uh, mechanisms that we currently got in place. I hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you. Yes, that does. I re remain reassured. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mrs. Wilson, Councillor Mrs. Wilson, did you um, get your two questions in? Sorry, Chair, I didn't quite hear you. Did you get your two questions that you managed to um, do? I'd just like to clarify um, the, uh, my point about an end date. If I may, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Mr. Wilson. Yes, yeah, so with regard to the actual service reviews, um, we're looking to have the reviews over the next um, 12 to 18 months, so those reviews will be, so the intention will be that. Um, we're moving at a relatively swift pace because obviously I uh, mentioned about uncertainty uh, with staff, so actually it's good to, rather than hanging out for a long period of time, but the first service reviews have started. Um, they'll, they'll come to a conclusion, then they'll come in front of members if there's significant changes um, being proposed. Um, so by the end of next year, the majority of those service reviews will have hopefully been done with regard to the partnership. Um, there may be opportunities that once we've done those, we might have to look at um, sort of looking at some of those services again, because if we do them individually, but looking at it as a broader corporate uh, effect, so across us, we may have to look at where some services might need some, some reviews again, but that, unlikely that is the case, but there may be some service where we see some benefits of once we've done one service, we then look at another service, actually would it be helpful to try and combine those two services moving forward. Um, in some areas. So just to reassure you, um, today was the second of two physical um, staff briefings that have been across Brentwood and, and Rochford. Um, we have a number of communications for staff, but um, today we had nearly 100 people at the Freight House for a staff briefing and a number of questions were, were answered. Uh, and today's, um, tonight's report has been presented, it was also discussed to reassure um, staff where there was some sort of uncertainty or, or anxiety around sort of some of the changes, but hopefully the number of questions posed and answered that that's made the workforce even more reassured, even though, like any change, there is some uncertainty, but um, people are reassured that they've had those questions asked, answered. Okay. Councillor Newport. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm afraid my colleague to my left here um, cannot hear anything that Mr. Stevenson just said. Um, could we maybe uh, adjust the audio somewhat? Thank you. Can you uh, arrange that? Okay, I think it's just the distance on the microphone. Okay. okay. Would you like me to repeat? Yeah, please, if you would. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that. Oh. Actually. Oh. Yeah, now. Okay, to cover that question, if that. Uh, for Councillor Stanley, you can hear me now. Okay, no problem. I think rather than bail down, I'll hold the microphone if everybody's happy with that. So with regard to the service reviews, the service reviews will look to intend to be um, completed by the end of next year, um, subject to work at a swift pace, but also uh, making sure we do far due diligence on all the service reviews. They will come in front of members if the significant change has been proposed through overview and scrutiny and then through to executive or council, depending on the function and, and requirement for that. What I did mention also, we did a number of staff briefings over the last two weeks um, to ensure that staff had an opportunity to engage physically with all of the uh, management team 
around any questions they might have, especially knowing a report like this was coming this evening as well. So today we concluded those staff briefings, one of them, the last one being at the Freight House, where over 100 staff attended, and a number of questions were answered. Hopefully that helps. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. You, you managed to get all that to outstanding. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, members. There are two recommendations in um, paragraph 14.2 on the report on page 8.4. I'll read them out. The first recommendation uh, that the proposed one team scales are set out in Appendix A are be approved, subject to the final negoti negotiation with Unison. Two, that the proposed one team terms and conditions as set out in Appendix B be approved subject to the final negotiations with Unison. Members, are you happy that I take those both together? Okay, thank you, members. I'll move those from the chair. Members, those in favour... Councillor, Mrs. Rowe, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, sorry, you've missed recommendation 14.1. Uh, let me have a look. That's what I have on this sheet here. Okay, members, sorry, that uh, wasn't on my sheet. I do apologise for that. Okay, I'll read out 14.1 um, to ensure that there is a single unified pay structure as well as terms and conditions to create parity across the, this council and Brentwood Borough Council. This will also ensure we remain competitive with the local government sector minimising recruitment and retention challenges we are all facing within this sector. Okay. Members, are you still happy for me to take those all as one item? Okay. Just pause in case somebody puts their hand up. No, okay. Uh, members, those in favour, please signify. Okay, thank you, Mr. McPherson. Yeah, Mr. McPherson, uh, Councillor McPherson seconds that. So, those in favour? Okay. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Unanimous. Members, that is unanimous. Members, agenda, agenda item nine, allocations of seats on committees. The report will be introduced by the councillors interim director of people and governments, Andrew Hunkin. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, you have a report in front of you on the allocation of seats to on well, the allocation of seats to committees, um, it's also, there's also um, been the opportunity to change the number of seats on the Planning Policy Committee from six to seven. With this report, you also have an addendum which sets out the various councillors' names against the seats, uh, so you should all have those in front of you. Uh, and that, in essence, is the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Members, we have one recommendation at this particular point. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? No. Uh, the recommendation at this point, and I move from the chair, is that the council committees be constituted as set out in Appendix 1 to this report. Do I have a second, please? Councillor Wilkinson. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> forgive me if I've misunderstood you. There are a couple of the, the committees that have been over-nominated, which we need to discuss. Yes, they, that will come as a, a next item. Next part okay, of the I misunderstood you. We apologies. need to do this bit first. All right. So, were you seconded in my... No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I need a seconder before you move. Thanks to Councillor Wood. Okay, members, those in favour of the recommendation I've just read out, please signify. Members, that's unanimous. Thank you. Members, you will see that the group leaders have nominated to 10 out of the 11, 13 seats on the development committee, uh, development committee. And these names are listed on the bottom of page 9.10. In addition, group leaders have nominated four members to the three remaining seats to determine, to determine these nominations. I will call out each member's name in turn and ask for a show of hands for each member. The three members with the most votes will be appointed to the seats. Is everybody happy with that? Clear with that? Uh, Councillor Mrs. Mrs. Shaw. Just for clarification, Chairman, the people we're going to be voting on is 9.11 at the top. Members. Okay. Sorry to be pedantic, but just want to make sure we know what we're voting on. Thank you. Sorry, my sheet says 1.10. Uh... Yes, they're on over the page on 9.10. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, is everybody clear on the voting? Everybody's happy with that. Right. Okay. The first name that I will read out is Councillor Eileen Gladson. Can I have a show of hands for Eileen? Okay. Row your hands. Next one is Councillor Jack Lawman. I still do not understand how we can vote more than once. I would just like some clarification. Just okay, we'll just get some clarification for you. Uh, Chairman, uh, there is can you hold the mic up, please? I thought Chairman, there is a, an elimination process here in, in that uh, you have more candidates and seats here. Obviously, you need to be filling uh, those vacant seats, which is why the seats will go to the number of, of to the, the councillors with the uh, most votes, and you are able to vote uh, for for each uh, candidate on, on the on the paper here. Sorry, can't hear you, Councillor Hoy. Sorry, for clarification, we have four votes each. Then. That's correct. That's Members, please bear with me. We're just having a clap. Could I just add another query to that, which has been provided by one of my group members, is that if we have four votes each, does that mean we can vote four times for a single candidate? Thank you. No, I don't think that's quite right. Just... 
So you have, uh, there are four candidates here for three, three positions. So you will be asked to raise your hand if you're in favor of each candidate as they're read out. So you can have four votes on that, and it will then just be the number of uh, the, the three councillors with the most votes who will then be allocated to the seats. Reclarify, we have three votes each. Four. Four votes. You just said we had three votes. You said you couldn't have four votes. I'm really confused now. Can we vote for four candidates? Yes, you can. Yes. Can so you, you have a candidate four times? Yeah. Each, each person I read out, you have a vote in either agreeing to that person being on the, uh, taking a seat or not. So by putting your hand up, you are agreeing that that person goes forward possibly for that seat. Councillor Mrs Belton. Sorry, I, I don't mean to be pedantic, but I'm sure we only get three votes yeah. here because there's three vacancies and we've done this before. It's Members, if you'd like to just talk amongst yourselves for a moment, um, I'll just talk, uh, talk to the monitor officer on this. Um, Councillor Hoy, thank you, just for a moment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got it. Members, if I can have your attention again, please. Okay, with a, a bit of a, a debate and a quick check through the uh, constitution there. Uh, thank you for bringing it to our attention, Councillor Hoy. Each member has three votes, and they can use that th those votes for any one of the four names that we I will read out. Okay. So we've already done the first one. Second one, you want me to do it again? Okay. Okay, first one is Councillor Eileen Gladstone. Take your lower hands. Second one is Councillor Jack Lawman. Okay, thank you, members. Lower your hands. Third one is Councillor Chris Stanley. And the fourth one is Councillor Stuart Wilson. Your hand, put, put your hands right up so we can see them, folks. Okay, the numbers are Councillor 
Mrs. Gladstone, 16. Councillor Lorman, 8. Councillor Stanley, 9. And Councillor Wilson, 23. So the vote goes to the three highest. So that's Mrs. Councillor Mrs. Glasson, Councillor Stanley, and Councillor Wilson. Members, we have received eight nominations to the nine seats on the Chief Executive's Office of Appointments Committee. Are there any further, nem recom any further nominations to the one outstanding seat? No one? Okay. Members that will then just remain vacant. Councillor Mrs Rowe. Thank you, Chairman. Um, that to me seems pointless. Now the Conservatives, as they've got a position on development, cannot put anyone else forward on the Chief Officers Appointment Committee. So can I suggest that the independents do? Does anybody want to put their hand up? It's a difficult sell, this, isn't it? No? Councillor Mrs Mason. Um, can I ask for some clarification from our officers? We, we have a, a vacancy on a committee. Most committees are normally parata. However, it's not being filled under the parata rules. Therefore, can, we, can that position be filled by any member from any group, or does it have to be under the Parata rules? Thank you. Okay, I'll get some clarification on that in a second. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. Just to, oh, blind, it was close. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just, that for, just to answer Councillor Mrs Rowe, um, the reason we're not nominating to that committee, uh, certainly from a personal point of view, is because I haven't got the time because my working life to give it dedication, so that's why I'm not nominating to it. But thank you. Okay. okay, could we have a clarification on uh, Council Mrs. Mason's point, please? The second members. Chairman, uh, members, I'm still getting up to date so with your constitution here, uh, but it does have to be on pro rata rules unless you actually vote to make all committees non pro rata. Councillor Mr. Hoy. I vaguely recall that in the past, it's, I'm, I'm sure it happened in council as well, where a committee may be non, a, an individual committee or decision may be non pro rata if it, the vote of the council is unanimous. Can you, is that what you were saying? Not all committees, but that, that one can be unanimous. Yes, it is exactly that, but it has to be a unanimous vote. So to clarify, if the Conservatives wanted to put someone, an additional person onto that committee and we voted unanim unanimously for that, that would be acceptable. It must means that no one must vote against rather than everyone must vote for. Sorry, Mr Hoy, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you. Sorry, I'll go, no, go closer. I should be short enough for it as well. Um, my understanding then is that if that happened, the, the vote would be unanimous, but it, we ignore non-votes for that. It, as long as everyone who votes, votes for, and no one votes against. Is that correct? Uh, 
Yes, that is correct. Okay, so on that basis. Does anybody wish to move that? There's an opportunity for somebody to be put forward to the committee, provided of those that vote, it's a unanimous vote, that person can go on the committee from any side of the chamber. Councillor Mr Wood. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for spelling that out so clearly. In that case, we would like to nominate Mrs. Tony Carter. Councillor Mrs. Rowe. Thank you, Chairman. I will second that. Councillor Wilkinson, you indicated. Thank you, Chair. No, I was going to, you were looking for someone to move a motion. I was going to move a motion that we do vote um, unanimously to make that committee. Um, to offer it to the, to the other group is what I was going to vote on, but they were ahead of the game, so I'll sit yeah. Okay. Members, that recommendation is before you. Those who are in favour, please indicate. Lower your hands. Those against? None. Any abstentions? Okay. With the abstentions, that means it's not carried had to be a non-vote. As long as I'm unvoted again. Sorry, Mr Hoyer, I'm difficulty hearing you. Sorry, I'm getting nearer now. I understood, and that was what I understood from what was said by the officer and when I've read the Constitution, that as long as no one voted against, and I thought that was what was said. Can you clarify that for me, please? Give us a moment. Monitoring officer. So we've had a look uh, at the constitution, we've also had a look at the legislation as well and we would like to have uh, some time to actually go and have a look at uh, that to make sure we are doing this right. So with that in mind uh, we're suggesting that you do nominate for the ones that are already there so approve them and leave that one post and we'll come back to you at a future date to be absolutely clear about how we actually go about filling that post. Propose that that item is deferred to the next meeting. Thank you. Councillor Mrs. Wilson. 
Hello, Chair. I'd just like to clarify um, what the officer said earlier. My understanding was, was that the vote had to be unanimous. Um, could I just ask for clarification on that as well, please? Thank you for your question on that. Again, we'd like to take that away and have a look at it. If we're not actually going to be voting on this anyway, then we can take it away and make sure that we are absolutely clear how to deal with this at a future date. Just to, so members know, Councillor Constable has seconded Councillor McPherson's motion there. Um, next speaker I've got is Councillor Mr. Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. I see the vice has got my name written down already. Um, just, just clarify, is that the entire item being deferred or just that committee? Just that committee. Sorry, it was just the, the word item was used, that was all. So it's yeah. just that committee, thank that you. That committee. My apologies, Councillor Wilkinson. Okay. Right, members, that proposal is in front of you. Those who are deem that worthy of acknowledgement... <laughs> I'm lost completely. Uh, those in favour of the deferment? Okay. Put your hands down, please. Okay, I need to go. Those against? None. Any abstentions? None. So that item is deferred. That committee, committee is deferred. Thank you. It's hard work. Okay. Just confirm me. That's the end of that item, isn't it? Right, members, agenda item 10, designation of statutory roles, monitor officer and section 151 officer. Uh, the report will be introduced by the Chief Executive, Chief Executive Jonathan Stevenson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in front of you, members, you've got um, item 10, the designation of statutory roles, a monitor officer and section 151 officer. Um, before I um, present the report, I just thought uh, I'd like to put on record thank you and support of Angela as our, our, our previous monitoring officer and Naomi Lucas as our 151 officer. Uh, a big thank you for the work they've done and undertaken over the many years supporting the council um, before I move on to the recommendation of this report. So the report recommends to designate the statutory roles of monitoring officer to Andrew Hunkin. Um, who's our Interim Director of People and Governance from the 14th of December 2022, um, and also to designate the statutory role of Section 151 Officer to Tim Willis, our Interim Director of Resources from the 14th of December 2002. Um, Tim is here in front of you tonight, and so is, so is Andrew at this meeting. Um, recommendations can be found at 8.1. I'm happy to take any questions if required. Members, are there any questions? Councillor Mr Wilson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, through you to the Chief Executive, um, what period of handover was given and are you content um, that that was sufficient to give continuity of service? Thank you, Chairman. Um, with regard to handover, obviously, um, uh, there's two roles we're talking about tonight. Um, Naomi Lucas is still with the organisation until the end of this week and um, Tim Willis is working with a handover. Angela Law has been providing handover um, to Andrew, um, and she's uh, last day is at the end of, of Jan um, December, but she's taking some leave. End of, uh, end of December. So of she's, she still works for the council to the end of December, um, but she's taking some leave between now and the end of December. There's been adequate handover. Obviously, um, there is still like any familiarization in new roles, so um, people are learning and, and developing in, the, in these roles. We've got a constitution in front of us tonight, and there's a number of questions are quite difficult technicality that was discussed tonight. So obviously um, that's why we deferred that rather than make the wrong decision this evening. So um, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Wood. 
Thank you, Chairman. In respect of point three of recommendation eight, um, can I say that in respect of the last item, uh, I find it quite tedious and quite embarrassing and actually doesn't show this council in the best light to be discussing uh, voting arrangements. And I would actually ask that uh, um, that is clarified so that there is clear understanding uh, when we come to voting. Uh, we go through this process um, every time we have votes on committees. And I did rather think in the spirit of Christmas, and I thought that Entente Cordiale had broken out uh, between the various groups, and it would be a fairly straightforward matter of allocating people to committees. Uh, and undoubtedly on this side, uh, there was confusion in, in the voting, and I'm still not clear that it's been clarified, even in respect of all the other votes that we've taken this evening. So I think that is an urgent priority on the Constitution, so there is clarity, uh, and we stop going through this charade every time there's apportionment on committees. Thank you, Chairman. Members, any other questions? Okay. Members, there are three recommendations set out on pa in paragraph 8.1 of the report on page 10.2. I'll read them out. That Andrew Hunking be designated as the monitoring officer for the council. That Tim Willis be designated as section 151 officer for the council that the monitor officer make any necessary subsequent changes to the council's constitution. I'll move that from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. McPherson. Members, are you happy for me to take those items all together? Okay, thank you. Members, those in favour, please signify. Against, oh, sorry, lower hands, against. Any abstentions? Okay, that's 29 in favour and four extensions. That is carried. Members, agenda item 11, attendance at the Royal Garden Party, 2023. The Councillor's Interim Director of People and Governance, Andrew Hunkin, will introduce the report. Thank you, Chairman. It is usual for Rochford District Council to have either one or two uh, invites to the Royal Garden Parties. Uh, it is clear that if there is one, then you have Councillor M.J. Webb, who has the most service. But if there is a second place to be allocated, then you have eight members uh, who are able to, to attend that. And if you, when you come to the recommendations, you'll see there's a recommendation there that we, have a, we, we draw lots to see if, uh, who will attend the second uh, place if we actually get it. And uh, if the recommendations are passed, then the, the chairman will draw the lots. Members, are there any questions? Okay, members. Okay, the first recommendation we need to deal with is that Councillor Mr. Webb and, and guest be nominated to attend the forthcoming Royal Garden Party invitation. Those in favour? Sorry, second, I beg your pardon. Okay, Councillor, thank you much, Mrs. McPherson. Uh, those in favour? Okay. Thank you, members. That is unanimous. Okay, second item is that a random lot be drawn at this meeting 
of the Council on the 13th of December 2022 to determine the second nominee to attend the forthcoming Royal Garden Party invitation. In the event of two places plus guest being allocated for 2023. I'll move that from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mrs Mason, did you second that? Okay, thank you. Okay, members, those in favour of drawing the lot, please indicate. Okay, lower your hands. Those against? Any abstentions? Okay, that is carried. Yeah. Members, we now do the draw. Members, the name out of the hat is Councillor Milne. Okay. Members, we have two further recommendations. The next one is that the civic officer submit the nominations to attend the Royal Garden Party once confirmation of the council's allocated allocation is received from the palace. And the last one, that the, that the civic car and civic chauffeur be used to transport the attendees represented Rochford District Council at the Royal Garden Party. I'll move this from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Mr. Citizen. Members, those in favour? Thank you, members. That is unanimous. <clears throat> members, agenda item 12. Reports from the Executive and Committees to the Council. Members, we have a report from the Audit Committee on the appointment of independent member to the Audit Committee. Tim Willis, will, Interim Director of Resources, will introduce the report. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this report proposes that an independent member is appointed to the Council's Audit Committee from the start of the new municipal year 2023 to 24, as recommended by Central Government following the Redmond Review and in line with the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy Best Practice. It's further proposed that the recruitment of the independent member be delegated to the Director of Resources in consultation with the Chairman and two other members of the Audit Committee. Thank you. Any questions, Members? Okay, Members, I'll move that from the Chair. Do I have a second? Councillor Milne. Councillor Milne. Is that second in? Yeah. Councillor, Mrs Mason, did you indicate? Thank you. Members, are you happy to take those recommendations together? Okay. Those in favour? Thank you, members. That's unanimous. <laughs>
Members, we now have a report from the Overview and Scrutiny Committee on the 2022 Mid-Year Treasury Management Review. Councillor Mrs McPherson, Vice Chairman of the Overall Scrutiny Committee, will introduce the report. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members, uh, I'm introducing the report tonight only because at the last meeting when this came forward to the overview and scrutiny, it was a very rare occasion where our chairman wasn't present. So, members, this report sets out the council's treasury management activity for the first half of the financial year. The report is presented to full council in accordance with SIPFA's Code of Practice and Treasury Management. Treasury management relates to cash flow management and funding the cap council's capital plans. The primary objectives are to ensure the Council has adequate cash at all times, being mindful of risk. The reference to risk relates to the need to be sure that the Council maintains adequate li liquidity. In simple terms, that it can pay all its bills, such as its suppliers and staff. It also relates to investments. No undue risk should ever be taken when decisions are made regarding the Council's cash is invested. The Council has no external borrowing, so the report is relatively straightforward. As interest rates are rising, there is the prospect of high investment in returns. However, the Council does not invest for more than one year in accordance with its approved policies. This helps protect, protect liquidity, but it also limits the investment returns. Rochford's overall approach to Treasury management is prudent. This is partly because it is how Treasury management operates in local government and it is governed by legislation, sorry, regulation I should say. But it is also worth noting that councils that have had a higher risk appetite have sometimes got into financial difficulty and this can have a direct impact on the amount of funding available to invest in and run services. So the Overview and Scrutiny Committee fully support the existing policies that govern, govern our Treasury management. I move the contents of the Treasury management mid-year <coughs> report to be noted by members. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Is there any questions? Okay. Members, uh, the contents of the Treasury Management Media Report be noted. Is that noted, Members? Noted, Chairman. Thank you. Agenda Item 13, Report of the Leader on, from, of the Leader on the Work of the Executive. Is that noted, Members? Noted, Chairman. Cool. Agenda Item 10, Public Questions and Member Questions on Notice. Members, we have no public questions, but there are a number of member questions on notice, which we will go through in turn. Councillor Mrs McPherson, can I invite you to read out your question to the portfolio holder for communities, housing, health and health, please. Thank you, Chairman. It was noted at the last council meeting that our council for our Council to actively promote the RSPCA's public awareness campaign about the impact of fireworks on animal welfare and vulnerable people, including the precautions that can be taken to mitigate risks. Could the portfolio holder for community please advise what action was taken? Councillor Williams. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor McPherson. Councillor Williams, can you move the mic a little closer, please? Can't get much closer. It's not on. Is that it? Better? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak about what we are doing regarding this subject. As we all know, Guy yeah. Fawkes... Yeah. Sorry. Do you want to get Why is it not? Okay. Try again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. It's good to have the opportunity to speak about what we are doing regarding this subject. As we all know, Guy Fawkes fireworks can be a nightmare for vulnerable adults, young children, family pets and wild animals. That is why this year Rochford District Council has supported and will continue to support the RSPCA firework bang out of order campaign. 
A press release was made by RTC reminding residents of their obligations regarding the safe and considerate use of fireworks. Also, the benefits of attending organised displays. These were also listed on our events page, pointing out the benefits and times of organised displays so that pet owners were able to prepare animals for noises and flashes. Also, that we fully support the RSPCA campaign. Direct links were also given to the RSPCA site in addition to this, we raised awareness of this, these issues on social media, Twitter, Facebook. The information and links will remain active on our website until after Christmas and New Year's period to cover any festive celebrations. I do have copies of our press release should any members wish to have sight of this. On a personal note, I will, I'd like to add that I will, at all points, as, whenever possible, I will lobby to, to have the noise of fireworks reduced. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor McPherson, do you have a supplementary question? I do, actually, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor. Uh, Mr Williams, um, could you um, uh, advise, are you um, having conversations, for example, with our licensing team about including um, certain... Uh, conditions or advice within event management plans that they work with large events within our district. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I can confirm that all, all major events have to have a temporary event notice so that, yes, that, that is the case. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Foster uh, put forward a question. I'm afraid he's not here this evening, so I'll put the question from Councillor Foster on, for, on behalf of him. The question is to the uh, leader. The Chancellor in November st statement announced that councils will be allowed to increase council tax up by up to 5% next year. Do you have any sense of whether RDC will need to make that level of increase? Councillor Wharton. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you uh, for uh, reading out Councillor Foster's question. The Chancellor made an announcement in the autumn statement regarding council tax increases. It was to allow lower tier councils such as Rochford to increase council tax in 2023 by up to 3% without the need for a referendum. To be clear, the 5% threshold only applies to upper tier councils such as the county if the social care precept is included. Ministerial officials have subsequently advised that the £5 limit also applies, which would mean that Rochford could increase its council tax by 3% or £5, whichever is the higher, without the need for a referendum. The council tax for a banned D property currently stands at £245.16. So if the percentage rise was applied, next year's increase would be limited in cash terms to £7.35. There have been regular all-member budget briefings on the financial position and the issues the Council faces now and in the future. This administration and the executive is still formulating its proposals to Council regarding the 2023 to 2024 budget and consequential impact on council tax. So it is too early to go into any detail. At the end of the day, the council is no different to any business facing rising prices and exposed to inflationary pressures from its suppliers. Moving forward, I do not pretend for one moment that managing council finances and balancing priorities will be an easy task. None of us in this room came into public life to do anything other than wanting to improve the lives of our residents and businesses and make the Rochford District a great place in which to live and work. The Conservative administration has a long and proud record of fiscal prudence and producing a balanced budget each year. It has no borrowing and therefore without the need of interest and capital repayments. It has no risky lending, in fact no lending at all. Furthermore, successive audit, audits 
have concluded value for money services, whilst at the same time there is a clear evidence of substantial capital investment in the district. Despite the challenges, I am confident that, unlike some councils, this strategy can continue under our administration. All I would say at the moment is that the district share of council tax offers excellent value for money. All the council services are provided to residents at a cost of less, at a cost of less than five pounds a week for a band D property. Even if we increased it by the full amount, it would still be at a cost of less than five pounds a week. Of course, those households that have difficulty paying their council tax may be eligible for a discount on their bill through the council tax support scheme. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Alden. Uh, I've not been advised by Councillor Foster that he had any form of supplementary question, but I am sure that if he has, he will take it up with you outside of this meeting. Okay. Next one is Councillor Constable. Can you please read out your question to the portfolio holder for the environment? I think you'll have to hold it up. It's not on. Try that. No. Try the other one. Second time lucky. Uh, following on from the recent tree planting across the district, what is the work plan for maintaining the saplings, especially if 2023 is another hot, dry year? Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, you might pay to hold it up. Okay. Councillor Thank you for the question, Councillor Constable which is very logical in view of all the effort that has gone into planning Parks for Nature program, not to mention the extra work undertaken in planting all these whips. However, if I may, I would like to mention all the other trees we have or will be planting in the weeks ahead across the district and their watering arrangements. Some more standards and also additional trees in the orchards at Cherry Orchard Country Park will be planted. The standard trees that are being planted are from the Urban Tree Challenge Fund and will be watered by Essex County Council as part of the funding opportunity and we would expect that a tractor and bowser watering system will be used but we have no further details at present. The whips we have planted are to be mulched before spring as part of the funding from Essex County County and the Woodland Trust. This will ensure good moisture retention and should mean that they will not require watering. <coughs> our orchard trees are being planted in Cherry Orchard Country Park and will be watered by either our open spaces team and or contractors, most likely both if we have another hot summer like last year. We are aware that Brentwood Borough Council has a, a Bowser and that we trust we can borrow so you may, may rest assured that we will monitor all aspects of the watering situation closely and take any action as necessary to ensure the maximum number of whips and trees survive the, survive the initial period should we have another very hot summer like last year. We will adopt the same approach to watering as we did earlier this year with, with the Queen's Green Canopy in Cherry Orchard Country Park. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Sperry. Constable, do you have a supplementary question? Uh, that's already been answered, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question is from Councillor Shaw. Councillor Shaw, can you please read out your question to the leader? Thank you, Chairman. Can the leader please advise what work is being done to help the, re the pupils that attend King Edmund King Edwin's School and what information is being given being giving to residents living within the vicinity of the school please. Councillor Wooden. Thank you Mr Chairman and thank you Councillor Mrs Shaw for your question. 
As members will know, the King Edmund School in Rochford had to be closed due to the discovery of asbestos during Department of Education, DFE, works to build a new classroom block at the site. The school had to be closed suddenly on the 15th of November. Students were facing working from home until the work had been completed. This council was approached by King Edmund's school on the 24th of November when I had a conversation with the head teacher, Mr Osborne. By working together, this council was able to provide space in the freight house for use by teachers and around approximately 30 pupils. Since the 29th of November, special education needs pupils have been having lessons at the building with remaining pupils continuing to learn from home. As leader, a bit like you a bit earlier, Chairman, I want to extend my very sincere thanks to the staff of this council and our partners, Fusion, who worked extremely hard to prepare and ensure the space was fit for purpose in such a tight time frame. Just two working days. In a quote from the head teacher, Mr Jonathan Osborne said, on behalf of the school, I want to thank everyone involved in making this happen. We are extremely grateful to Rochford Council as well as other partners for the way they have supported us at speed to meet the needs of our students. It speaks volumes about the commitment of the council and its officers to the young people who attend the King Edmund School. Current conversations with the school assume that the school will reopen in the new year. However, Essex County Council, DFE, and the school will confirm this with their own communications. The freight house, however, remains available to the school should they need to continue to use the site during this emergency. Officers have remained in the close contact with the head teacher offering our support. However, this issue is being managed by the Health and Safety Executive, so our role is one of support. The DFE engaged the Specialist Asbestos Removal Company to conduct a comprehensive sampling program of the demolition site and surrounding area, all on school grounds. If these results indicated an issue, the sampling area would be expanded to include local residential properties. The sampling comprised of 200 samples, including solid core samples taken from the rubble and air testing to look for free floating fibres. The air testing included the caretaker's house that is located on the boundary of the school near other residential properties. Oracle Solutions have completed their sampling and subsequently, subsequently confirmed to the DFE that all of the samples have passed acceptable levels and that it is safe to remove the rubble without additional asbestos safeguards and the waste material is currently being removed from site. A full report on the results is expected shortly and the head teacher has agreed to share these with the council once they are issued. Once officers have the report, it will be reviewed and further updates provided. As stated, the site is enforced by the Health and Safety Executive. From conversations with them, they are happy with the situation and are not minded to take action. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wooden. Councillor Mr Shaw, do you have any supplementary questions? No, thank you, Chairman. Members, that finishes that particular item. Item Agenda item 15, motions on notice. We have two. First motion is proposed by Councillor Mrs Belton and seconded by Councillor Hoy. Councillor Mrs Belton, would you like to introduce your motion, please? Thank you, Chair. So this motion proposes that Rochford District Council undertake an initial one-year air pollution monitoring program covering schools across the district. We believe that 16 additional tubes will collect data for 21 schools, subject to the suitability of those locations being checked. In addition, we would like to investigate the possibility of purchasing a mobile testing unit or sharing one with another local authority to allow us to be reactive when potential sites are raised. Testing has to be conducted from January to December um, in order to officially um, record the data. 
And whilst in most cases we hope that the level will be well within the national acceptance, we believe pre prevention is better than cure. A budget of only £643.20 is needed for the tubes for one year, based on 16 tubes, with the addition of half a day per month officer time to collect those tubes. As part of the initiative, a behavioural change and educational programme would be rolled out to schools in the district for parents, teachers and students. We have evidence from the current testing sites that proves the reduction in traffic significantly improves the quality of air and as such, working with these stakeholders to encourage change could make a difference that we can report on and reward or incentivise. It states that we were looking at £10,000 SEP funding. This has now been approved, so we do have that available to us towards this project. And I would just like to thank Councillor Hoy and the other councillors that took an active approach with this over the last six months to shortlist the areas. Thank you. Councillor Mr Hoy, can you confirm that you are seconding the motion? I'm on seconding. Can I speak later, please? Thank you. Members, are there any questions? Councillor Newport. Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, I'd like to uh, congratulate Councillor Hoy to uh, get this motion supported by a Conservative member. The Lib Dems and Rochford District residents and the Green Group sought additional air quality monitoring in 2016 when the request was dismissed by the administration. Although we personally paid to carry out our own testing across the district, the administration didn't listen to the residents' concerns. But here we are six years later, and Councillor Belton is proposing that the administration comes round to our way of thinking, which is great. Our residents are concerned about air quality, and they know that poor air quality contributes to many premature deaths. Of course, for those living on the Ashingdon Road and the pupils attending Holt Farm School, it is too little too late, as the hundreds of additional cars in the new housing will bring that the new housing will bring will contribute to even more pollution and the removal of the tree would just add to insult to injury for residents and any hope of improving their air quality. If the administration had acted sooner, then perhaps the data collected would have been significant of significant benefit, but we will never know the possible alternative outcome. However, looking to the future, I agree that we need to know if and where hotspots of poor air quality are. So a proactive approach of action can be taken and we can potentially save lives. I do, however, think that we do not need to lay any more weight on our already overstretched officers in trying to roll out an educational programme when one is already in place by Essex County Council. Chairman, I would therefore like to move the following amendment to this motion. The paragraph, and I shall uh, try and go through this slowly, but basically what I would like to do, amend the motion by removing paragraph six, Chairman, which is as part of the in initiative of behavioral change to incentivize that paragraph and simply replace it with a line that says, Rochford District Council will work with partners at Essex County Council to su support the sustainable transport schemes, which includes behavioral change in initiatives being rolled out, such as healthy school streets. If, do you need me to repeat that, Chairman? Yes, could you repeat that, please, Councillor Newport? So we're clear that uh, we remove paragraph six and add Rochford District Council will work with partners at Essex County Council to support the sustainable transport schemes, which include behavioural change initiatives being rolled out, such as healthy 
school streets. Is that okay, Chairman? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Newport. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Stanley, are you seconding that? Yes, Chairman, thank you. Okay. Members, we need to debate the amendment. So, are there any questions or comments on the amendment? Councillor Constable, you had your hand up first. Yes, I'd uh, like to speak. Can you? Is that one working now? Yeah. I'd like to speak against that motion. I think um, leaving Essex County Council to deal with this issue is a little bit backward thinking. I think we could deal with this far better locally rather than involving Essex County Council. So, therefore, I cannot. Uh, support that motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mrs. Belton. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Constable. What I don't want to do is limit what we can do by saying that we are only going to work with certain partners. I would like us to be able to leave it open and roll out an initiative that we support as a school that works for our schools and our residents. Okay. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd, I'd like to understand the benefits that Councillor uh, Newport uh, thinks being ECC involved in this would, would, would do. I'd just like to understand the basis behind his amendments, if I may. Councillor Newport, can you answer that question? Yes, Chairman. Um, all county members will be aware that the Sustainable Transport Officer at Essex County Council is working with every school in the district or will be working with every school in the district to enact their healthy school street schemes around the district and all of those details are available on Essex County Council's website or alternatively um, I'm sure Councillor Lee Scott will uh, send out any information required at a later stage but there is already work ongoing between um, head teachers, and it may be a little bit confusing for head teachers um, to have Rochford District Council then come along to try and educate as well as Essex County Council. And I think resource-wise, we're just duplicating or trying to duplicate the work that's already being done by Essex and being paid for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Newport. Uh, Councillor Stanley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I do think that uh, this amendment is uh, quality in itself and that Essex County Council is in talks with all the schools in the area. That's what Essex County Council is there for, as they can control everything that goes into the schools and they are conversing with those schools as we speak. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Mason. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. I think we're getting bogged down in something that the amendment is focusing more on who's doing something and rather than how effective it's going to be. Essex County Council is the highway authority, but they are the highway authority for a very large area. And we all know the difficulties that we are facing with highway issues. I don't see any reason why this council can't supplement the work that's being done. I'm sure that uh, Councillor Belton is quite capable of liaising with county council so that there's no com conflict and that the work that we do is important for our residents and it's our residents that we should be focusing on. So I'm afraid I will not be supporting the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Wooden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> I find it quite surprising that this agenda was published of the order of about 10 days ago, and we wait till this evening before Councillor Newport talks to uh, either Councillor Hoy or Councillor Mrs. Belton about his proposed amendment. Um, because here we are once again, and it happened last council, where we have a really decent cross-party motion on the table 
uh, and I really would like to see uh, greater cross-party working. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't work with Essex County Council. I'm not for one moment uh, knocking that opportunity, but I believe that already happens uh, through other uh, meetings. Uh, I'm aware of the work that Transport East is promoting. Um, but I can't quite see why every time we, well, I won't say every time, that's not a fair statement, but I can't quite see why all of a sudden love breaks out between Essex County Councillors and Rochford District Councillors um, on a motion which is wholly Rochford District Council uh, coming up with an absolutely splendid idea. I don't really see why we need to involve ourselves. I've got absolutely nothing against our working with Essex County Council, but this is a good motion. It stands in its own right on its own. Certainly we want to work with Essex County Council, but I see no justification whatsoever to amend the wording at the 11th hour. Um, I think it's a good motion and uh, I will be voting against the amendment. Anyone else? Okay, just before I put that to the vote, can I just confirm with the monitoring officer as a member of Essex County Council whether I need to declare a uh, declare? Uh, Chairman, I, I don't think there is a need to declare on this, this Thank particular you. issue. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Mrs Shaw. Councillor, but I'm also on um, the Vice Chair for SEC. Um, declare um, a non pecuniary interest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other items on this amend amendment? Okay, members, we need to vote on the amendment. Okay, uh, Councillor Hoy, did you want to come back? Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. Jump in the gun. Members, you've heard the uh, amendment from Councillor Newport. Those in favour, please indicate. Okay. Thank you, members. Those against? Thank you, members. Any abstentions? Can I have the numbers? Members, there was six four, twenty three against, three abstention. That amendment is lost. Thank you, members. We now go back to the original motion. Does anybody wish to speak or question on the original motion? Councillor Mr Mason. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, a question is about the substance of the, the motion. It refers in particular <coughs> to NO2. Uh, I have personal concerns about particulates. So I'd like a confirmation and assurance that particulates are going to be measured as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Bell, can you answer that question? I'm not a scientist, I'm afraid, so I don't know all the specifics, but Councillor Hoy may be able to because this has been discussed. Thank you. Councillor Mr Hoy, can you can clarify that question? Can you put the mic a little closer, please? <laughs> Sorry, I'll get used to this. Um, Ticulates are not being measured separately. They're, they can only be measured through the diffusion tubes, which is a byproduct of actually measuring for NO2. So the answer is probably no, but the, the, the additional monitoring unit that we were talking about within the motion would monitor for particulate matter. Yes. And I mean, if you want to, I can talk on the motion now. If that's I've easier. got a couple of more but people want to come in. So, so I can come on to that in a bit more detail later yeah. then. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hoy. Councillor Mrs Goodin. No. Mm. 
Now. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I believe this initiative is most welcome, particularly since concerns were raised at Holt Farm School. Um, this, I believe, was what kick-started the committee coming together to uh, talk about this. Uh, can the portfolio holder, Councillor Belton, please give the rationale for the locations? Um, are there any newly proposed or construction roads? Will they be included in the future? Is that something we can consider? Councillor Belton, can you clarify on that point, please? Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, the initial 16 tubes, the, the way that we came to these sites was by looking at all of the schools across the district, cross-referencing existing monitoring that takes place, looking at what schools could be monitored in partnership because of their locations, and essentially working out where they would need to go to get the best coverage across all of the schools. That includes all, all levels of education, senior schools as well. Um, the, the mobile unit is so that we could be reactive and make changes should new developments, new sites come, come up. But for the first 12, 12 months, it's been proposed that these 16 sites look suitable. Working with the relevant officer, he has identified these as, as the best places to get the biggest capture. Um, multiple councillors were involved in that to ensure that we got good coverage across the district at all levels. Can you just clarify me for me, Councillor Ms. Belton? Uh, does that include the Wakering School? It does. Thank you. Okay. Any other points? Councillor Mrs. Mason. Thank you. Um, I do welcome this. I, I think it's well done. Councillor Belton would not be, have been aware that this was refused by Rochford Council in 2016. Um, and I accept that, though Councillor Hoy was involved in the, the work that was carried out by the other groups. We did met, one of the sites that we monitored was in fact Holt Farm School. And though I believe, and Councillor Newport will correct me if I'm wrong here, that all of the areas that we monitored were within limits and these were paid for, remember, by members because Rochford refused at that time. So I'm really pleased that this is being done by the council. Um, they were close. So I think it's w well overdue. But what I would like to ask the portfolio holder to look at in the future, I accept that it's not included in this motion, to look at particulars because that is very important. So um, obviously I have a concern that that's not being included, but I certainly welcome the motion. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Belton, if, the, um, if you can clarify whether it does co cover particulates and let members know that would be useful, perhaps information later. I think Councillor Mr Hoy is going to explain. Okay. Yeah, so as Councillor Hoy pointed out, the tubes themselves don't, don't monitor particulates in their, on their own. That's part of the whole monitoring. Um, but I think Councillor Hoy will come on to this because we did discuss it in our group meeting some months ago. Um, the device itself to, to record particulates on their own is extremely expensive and hard to come by, or it was at that time, um, but certainly we'd be open to improving things in the future and, and just enhancing and growing on what we're intending to do in this initial motion. Thank you. Any other questions, points to raise? Okay, Councillor Hoy, would you like to uh, sum up on that before we put it to vote? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank um, Councillor Mrs. Belton for um, taking this on so enthusiastically after my email to her in June, which I'd, I had been working on for a little while, but I realised that after speaking to Councillor Wooten um, about how he wanted to include everyone in the work of the Council, I thought I would try it, and I have to say it's worked very well so far, so thank you. Um, I'll be serious for a bit. Um, that everyone has should have the right to breathe, to breathe clean air. It's fundamental to our health and to our lives of our children. Um, I think this particularly drew, drew my attention with the um, death of a schoolgirl. The 
There's a bill currently that has been passed by the House of Lords, the Clean Air Human Rights Bill, known as Ella's Law. And it's Ella who made me think about this a bit more. It's about school children walking to school who are becoming ill and dying, in her case, because of poor air quality, beyond poor, dangerous, deathly air quality. Um, and that's what started on it. Then it, again, I think um, Councillor Mrs Gooding mentioned um, Holt Farm School. When the appeal went through, we realised that the air quality data we had officially wasn't good enough. We didn't really have enough quality. We can extrapolate from somewhere else. And I think we're extrapolating from the Anne Boleyn to Holt Farm School. And that just isn't good enough. So um, I thought we should probably monitor outside all schools to begin with. And this may be moving on a bit further later as well, hopefully. Um, so as you can see, the, the cost of monitoring for 16 sites, 21 schools, is, is fairly minimal in the scheme of the Council's budget, around £680. However, <coughs> within this as well, we mention mobile monitoring. I had the good fortune to recently bump into a former officer of Rochford who dealt, dealt with air monitoring, and uh, I, I got a lot of information. And there are now much cheaper ways to monitor air mechanically. They can be attached to lampposts and, and connected to the power of the lamppost. And these can be moved fairly easily around the district. And they're much cheaper than the air monitoring unit we used to have in Rady the top of Rady High Street or the larger mobile street furniture style ones. So certainly we can add, start adding more to this motion and hopefully throughout the forthcoming year add to, to this more. Um, with regard to the particulate matter which Councillor Mr Mason mentioned and others, these, the ones you attach to the lamppost will monitor particulate matter. Um, and I'll also add that the particulate matter, the, the sizes may be coming down soon, given the, the recent change in legislation. So particulate matter at 2.5 may become 5 from the current 20. But I understand there's a big problem because we have Sahara and dust here. So but it can still be measured. It may be that we're in the danger area more than we would like to be. Uh, I'll just finish by saying the monitoring will give us valuable data to feed into the new local plan and to put any planning applications leading from that or the current plan. And as I said, lack of data on pollution was a clear problem in the Bloor's development. I hope you'll support this motion as a first step to a cleaner Rochford district. Council. Thank you, Councillor Hoy. Members, that motion is before you. All those in favour, please indicate. Unanimous. Thank you, members. That is unanimous. Members, we have a second motion, uh, which is proposed by Councillor Eves and seconded by Councillor Belden. Councillor Eves, can you please introduce your motive, motion on notice? Thank you, Chair. I think it's fair to say that we are all too aware of the energy crisis, not only in cost and capacity and long-term viability of current resources. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. When burned for energy or used in a fuel cell, it only emits water, which means it has the potential to be a major source of clean energy for the world. There is much to be said about the emerging hydrogen power solution. Much of the current hydrogen production is grey or blue. This motion is focused on green hydrogen which is the only hydrogen production that is truly green. Although in its relative infancy, eye-watering amounts of money are being poured into research and development of green hydrogen and significant advances are being made. The potential for green hydrogen use as a sustainable power source for the future is huge. <coughs> 
Hydrogen could be used in residential and commercial settings for heating, which includes appliances such as furnaces, boilers, water heaters, gas fireplaces, stoves and laundry dryers. In transportation, fuel cell electric vehicles, FCEVs, for passenger and freight transport are an emerging market that currently represents a small fraction of global vehicle fleets compared to internal combustion engine vehicles and battery electric vehicles. However, FCEV potential is promising and the number of transportation applications is growing. A 10-point plan for net zero transition was introduced by the government in 2020, backed by £12 billion of government investment, aiming mm. to create a quarter of a million green jobs. There are many examples of areas where green hydrogen is advancing in the UK. To name a few, here are some examples. The first major green hydrogen production and storage plant will be operational in Bath next spring. A production plant has been approved to be built in Hearn Bay, where the green hydrogen produced will be used to power the local buses. Teva, a startup company in Thurrock, is making the first successful mass-produced part hydrogen-powered trucks. Local airlines have a route map in place for green hydrogen to power commercial flights in the not too distant future. What this motion is specifically asking for, knowing the government grants that are available, is for Rotsford District Council to be looking for companies in our district that can incorporate green hydrogen into their businesses, pointing them towards and encouraging them to take up the not unsubstantial government funding that is available. Putting the motion into RDC policy will achieve that aim. The cost to the Council for implementing the motion into policy is none other than officers', officers time. But the long-term potential for our district to bring clean air and sustainable fuel for the future, I believe, is weighed heavily in favour of approving the motion. I sincerely hope that members agree and vote in favour. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Belton, I believe you are seconded in. Can you confirm? And do you reserve the right to speak at the end? Um, yes, I can confirm, and yes, I would like to reserve the right. Thank you. Okay. Members, Councillor Cross. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Reeves has actually uh, stolen quite a bit of my thunder there. I thought he was just going to read the... Uh, <laughs> the items on the agenda, but um, I just wanted to speak directly to the motion and say that I'm 100% uh, behind it for the following reasons. Clearly, there is a need to move away from the use of fossil fuels and other materials that release harmful greenhouse gases that contribute towards global warming. This council should be, excuse the pun, energised to support companies to apply for funding from government to develop green hydrogen or very low carbon hydrogen technologies. There is currently 240 million pounds available in the government's net zero hydrogen fund, NZHF, in three key areas. Initially, funding for low carbon hydrogen production, either by electrolysis, powered by electricity from renewable sources, the so-called green hydrogen, or using the methane stroke steam process with carbon capture usage and storage. Uh, the second phase is, is looking at transportation and storage. It's not practical uh, to transport and store in its natural gas form. So it needs to be liquefied either under high pressure, very high pressure, or converted to liquid ammonia for transportation and storage. Uh, the usage of hydrogen for flexible energy combined heat and power generation, heavy industry, industrial processes and transportation, as Councillor Eves mentioned, electric buses, uh, heavy goods vehicles, even ships and planes. And it was slightly disappointing to hear that Rochford District Council have recently replaced their refuse collection vehicles with diesel powered vehicles, but I understand the economic and practical reasons for doing so. 
There is also additional funding available now, uh, circa £290 million, pounds to facilitate the switching of fuels, uh, red diesel, etc., to hydrogen fuel cell powered electric vehicles. Maybe Rochford District Council could look towards this fund to switch one or more of its new diesel RCVs to fuel cell electric power, something to consider. This would address point three of the motion. Uh, and just to read from the government's white paper um, updates of July uh, this year. Conclusion. Last year, the UK made clear its ambition to become a world leader in the development of a low-carbon hydrogen economy to help achieve our net zero targets and secure economic benefits across the UK. Since then, we have raised our ambition even further and are now making extensive progress to realise it. With government and industry working together, the UK stands firmly at the forefront of global efforts to develop low carbon hydrogen as a clean, secure energy source of the future and to realise the opportunities it holds for UK businesses and citizens. So I hope this council um, helps to facilitate this programme and I'm, I'm strongly in favour of the motion. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Efty. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'm also in favour of this motion. Um, this council, a lot of the officers and members drive electric. And my personal opinion, I think electric is going to be a stopgap if we don't have something to generate electricity. And hydrogen, I think, is one of the main things that's going to be used in the future. So anything we can do to help with hydrogen and with green energy is, has my support. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hoy is next on my list. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'll be supporting this motion. I think probably no one's surprised about that. Um, I've just got a, a couple of questions, really. One is, can we confirm that there are no costs to this. I assume there aren't as there are no costs mentioned, so it'd be cost neutral or just office of time to some extent. Um, also, I'm aware of the issues around green hydrogen. I understand there's been 25 million, was that the one Councillor Cross mentioned, 25 million announced today from the government for green hydrogen. Um, so there's certainly grants available. Um, I've, I just wonder how this is going to be reported back to Council. Is there a way we can say that um, it will be reported back to full Council within a year, perhaps? That would be the only question. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Sperry. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to reassure Councillor Cross, we have a constant conversations with our partners, Norse, uh, with Rochford District Council with regard to our waste collection services and street cleaning. The advantage, perhaps, of having Norse with us is that they deal with uh, probably about another 30 councils across the country. So we're having an ongoing conversation about how things are moving for and using equipment, maintaining it, and all the rest of bits and pieces, whether it be electric, hydrogen. So I can reassure members that these conversations are ongoing at all times. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor, Mr. Mason. I think Mr. Mason was first. Sorry, sorry if I've started a matrimonial one there. Sorry. Chairman, I've been usurped again. And not in my own home. Chairman, I'm fully in support of, of this motion as indeed I was the last one, which is on green and climate issues. Um, just a few thoughts came to my mind as Councillor Eves was speaking. Electrically powered transport is going to increase and frankly, it's going to extend the demand well beyond anything we can produce by renewable means. It just can't meet it. In fact, there's talk about 
the grid having to raid the batteries of electrically powered cars to sustain the use of the country at the present time, whether that is seen as a, uh, a solution to our current troubles, I don't know. But the really good news is, if we, if, if we can put these plants in the right place, couple them with renewables, solar and wind, then actually we can electrolyze water and produce green hydrogen on a double, double whammy win. So I'm in full support of it. And I do hope that our local industries will, I'm sure this motion will be passed. I'm sure, I hope our local industries will embrace it and get hold of whatever support they can to introduce it to at least their vehicles and maybe uh, domestic heating. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Mrs Mason. Well, I won't deepen my voice to match Councillor Mr Mason. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. This is another motion, another project where we can put Rochford District Council in the forefront. There is, Councillor Eves has given us a very good summary and we've heard from other speakers as well. Businesses in our area need to be made aware of the opportunities available to them and if they are, it will benefit the whole of our community. I don't think I can say any more because I think it's all been said. So I'll certainly be supporting this and thank you. Okay. Councillor Ward. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, as portfolio holder for strategic planning, really do welcome this. I want this introduced into our local planning as we go Councillor forward. Councillor Ward, can you speak directly into the microphone? Thank you. I want this introduced into our local plan. We have other ideas that will mix in with this very, very well. Biomass and various other things that we would want to look at and which we will try to introduce going along. But I really do welcome this. And there was an interesting part in regards that I found out uh, in regards to Worcester, Worcester Bosch. Apparently, they are doing a massive experiment of gas and it's hydrogen that is being pumped into Worcester as a major experiment and it is working very well. So it bodes very well for the future. We don't necessarily need to, to frack or anything like that. We can actually produce hydrogen. There will be changes, there will obviously be amendments to boilers, but the boilers can remain the same. They can be amended on the burners. So, frankly, I'm going to fully support this motion, totally agree with it, and want it incorporated into our strategic planning. Thank you. Councillor Constable. Thank you. Um, as somebody that has been working in the gas industry for nearly 50 years now, um, there is no clean way and cheap way of producing hydrogen. What one of the methods they spoke about earlier is burning natural gas to produce another gas. So there isn't a clean way and there isn't a cheap way of producing hydrogen. When it does come in, it will be um, greatly appreciated. What Councillor Ward was talking about is the introduction of a hydrogen mix into the system. So if they introduce 20% hydrogen into the system, then we will save 20% of the carbon emissions. This country is probably producing less than 1% of the carbon emissions emitted in the world. But what little we can do is better than nothing. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Cross. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanted to move an amendment, actually, uh, to uh, Councillor Eve's uh, motion. Um, that is simply to add um, a fourth point, and Councillor Hoy alluded to it, uh, to have, uh, so my amendment would be to have a regular annual report to the Council on the progress of the engagement and funding secured and pr progress towards Rochford District Council's own net zero uh, target by 2030. Okay. Have you got a note to that? 
Okay, can you repeat the wording, please, Councillor Cross? Okay. Uh, a fourth point, to have a regular annual report to Council on the progress of the engagements, that's with industry potential partners, etc., and the funding secured and progress towards Rochford Council's own net zero target by 2030. Councillor Cross, do you have a seconder for that amendment? Councillor Eves, do you accept that amendment? Yes, sir. As to a, 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 yes, Chairman, I do. An update to your... So. Yeah, okay. Can I have a seconder for that? Yes. Councillor Stanley, I think, got his hand up first, I think. <laughs> okay. Where is that in second? Yeah. Okay, right. Councillor Belton, do you accept that amendment to your motion? Those amendments, and do I still have a chance to come back at the end? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say something myself. Um, members, having spent most of my working life in the motor trade, this is something that's quite uh, intrigued me over the many years. There is an awful lot of research going on um, on companies like JCB, who Obviously, a digger doesn't work particularly well on electric power. They are doing a lot of development on hydrogen internal combustion engines for farmers and, um, obviously, building sites, which also includes a, a method of distributing that uh, gas um, uh, by different trucks to be able to go out on the farm. So it's worth actually keeping an eye on what they are doing as well. Uh, they're doing an awful lot of research on that, as is Mazda with their, what was called, I think a lot of member will, members will re remember this, is what they refer to as their Wankel engine, um, which is something that works far more efficiently on hydrogen than it does on, uh, on a petrol engine. Councillor Wooten. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I have absolutely no issue with Councillor Cross's uh, proposed amendment, except that I want to make sure that we're not duplicating effort. Um, I thought that within the carbon neutral um, rep uh, report to the ambitions that this council has to be carbon neutral by 2030, I would have thought it could be incorporated within that report, uh, but I'd need guidance from officers as to when that is actually brought back, because I think it's absolutely right that uh, we do um, include it within our reporting but it's very easy on an evening just to look in silos and I think there should be a comprehensive report um, so I in no way want to diminish that point but I want to make sure that we're um, being comprehensive with our reporting rather than just having lots of individual reports. Thank you Chairman. Councillor Mrs Belton. Thank you. If, if I may come in first, um, and then I'm sure Marcus may want to come in after and add some, add some value. Um, what, what I would say is that, so as portfolio holder, we, we meet regularly and we look at all the strategy and we, we put that together and we constantly review everything that's going on. And there's a huge amount going on under the climate umbrella. Um, as you are all aware, we're currently putting together the strategy, the climate strategy that will come forward to ONS before coming to full council. I absolutely agree that it needs to be reported on. Um, what I will say is that some of this, a large part of this motion doesn't relate to the council's own carbon neutral strategy. It relates to a carbon neutral strategy for the district and for looking at how the district improves. So we need to be careful about what our expectations are because this, this motion is about incentivizing businesses and industry within our district and not the actual carbon stuff that we have within our own operations. It's outside of that control. Um, I'm open to suggestion as to how we report, but I think it's important that we can see that positive steps are being taken and that businesses and industry are engaging where the opportunity arises. Okay. Did the officer wish to come in on that at all?
Uh, thank you. And just to, uh, to sort of uh, answer Councillor Wilson's uh, sort of, uh, um, sort of uh, question. So I, I think in many ways the, the motion um, is alluded to in the strategy that's coming forward, but I think is explicit in what Councillor Eves has put forward. And so in many ways, I think to ensure that uh, that, that, that is actually picked up, that I think the, the motion uh, does have merit in that, that it, it goes beyond what the strategy says. So the, although the strategy sort of makes reference to having sort of carbon reduction in terms of um, um, our vehicle fleets and district-wide um, sort of strategy for, for transport, that it, there's nothing explicitly um, reference to hydrogen in such detail. So the motion has a sort of separate level of merit in, in, in that sense. But as, as um, Councillor Bennell has already said, uh, we are taking the um, uh, new strategy back into, or the reviewed strategy back into overview and scrutiny in January, reviews taken to council, and I imagine that the reporting cycle picks up with that annually as well. Thank you. Okay. Any other members? Councillor Eves, um, I'm going to ask you to summarise uh, your uh, motion and obviously in this case add in the fourth point, if you could, officers can help you out if you've lost the wording. Okay, thank you, Chair. Just before I do that, I would like to just answer one question that Councillor Hoy put forward on cost. I did phone uh, Marcus this morning and just check on the issue of costs. There are no costs involved other than officer time. And uh, I did confirm that this morning. So the motion is for this council commits to identify, encourage and engage industries in the district to foster opportunities towards the development and imp implementation of green hydrogen as a future way of fueling, but not limited to the transport sector. To engage with local companies to learn from projects in the UK that are either currently underway or have plans in the future to power vehicles on green hydrogen with the view to seeking and securing any future available funding for this sector. Three, to recognise that implementation of a green hydrogen project will improve the Council's objective of meeting its carbon neutral targets. And four, to report back to Council on an annual basis on progress. Thank you, Councillor Thank you. Councillor Mrs Belton, do you want to just uh, add anything to that and then we'll go to the vote? Thank you. Um, just, just a couple of things. Firstly, my extensive thanks to Councillor Reeves for doing a huge amount of research and work in bringing this motion forward. I know a lot of time and effort has gone into this and an awful lot of detail has been presented to us this evening. So on behalf of members, I'd like to thank you and certainly on behalf of myself as the climate um, portfolio. Um, and just for, for members, some reassurance that we do have mechanisms for getting this information out. We have REBA, we have the Tell Me More bulletins that go out and we have a fantastic economic development team, all of which can do the work to get this information about grants into the inboxes and, and into the ears of those that need it across the district. So I think we can take positive spe steps forward to ensure this isn't a loose motion and that actually we can get some, um, some weight behind it with the, the teams that we have. Um, and lastly, that of course I would like members to support any motion that comes forward that further, further strengthens the work that is going on in this council cross-party to reduce our own carbon emissions and carbon emissions of that in the district. Um, I think there's some really good work and some good research going on. And again, my thanks to, to Councillor Eves. Um, and we look forward to hearing more detail in, in good time from, from councillors on this matter. Thank you. Okay, members, that motion is before you. Those who are in favour, please signify. Thank you, members. I'm pleased to say that is unanimous. Thank you. Members, just before... Uh, Councillor Constable, did you vote on that? Okay, apologies, it's not unanimous, I beg your pardon. So, did you wish to vote against or abstain? Abstain. So, let me just correct that for the record. What was the numbers then, please? 32 for one abstention. Councillor Wooten. I'm just a little unclear as to where Councillor Cross is. Um, 
amendment to the motion fits in, uh, because I think that was an extremely important point. Yeah, the, the Councillor Cross's amendment was accepted by the proposer of the original motion and seconded, so it was added to the original motion. Thank you, members. Just before I close the meeting, just to remind you, um, there is some wine, orange juice, water, if you wish, um, and some nibbles and uh, mince pies upstairs, I believe. So please feel free to join us, and obviously officers as well. You're more than welcome to join us. Members, I close the meeting. I make it uh, 9.45.